All right. All right, everybody. So can everybody hear me? Can somebody let me know in the chat here whether you guys can hear me on my little crusty, dusty microphone? Awesome. Thanks, Joseph. I appreciate it. Thanks, Corey. All right, guys. So um, welcome to my first official podcast or not podcast live stream, I guess you could say. Um, so I kind of want to do these a little bit, um, a little bit more often, you know, a little bit to, uh, kind of interact with you all kind of touch on some subjects and everything about 3d printing, what I'm doing, what I'm working on, just different things at a different time. Hold on a second. There's a stupid glare there. So, um, tonight's subject that we're going to kind of touch on is something that a lot of people, uh, have asked about and, um, uh, we're going to kind of touch on a little bit, and that's how to make money in 3D printing. So um, if you are a uh, 3D printer or if you are a, you know, a painter or a commissioner or something like that nature, then um, by all means, uh, chime in on the chat and let me know uh, maybe some ideas that, because I don't know everything, um, but some of the ideas that you guys are doing in order to uh, get into the 3D printing and making money at it and everything. So the first couple things that uh, come to mind whenever I talk about 3D printing and making money at it is eBay and Etsy. So, um, of course, getting a printer, printing some stuff, putting it on Etsy, putting it on eBay is the easy thing. But what, what really intrigues me is a lot of people think it's easier said than it's, it's easier said than done. A lot of people think that it's just, oh, just get a printer start printing out some stuff or whatever like that. And I can make a bundle of cash and it doesn't work that way. So I personally don't do any commissions or any printing or anything like that, putting on the internet or for sale or anything. I basically just have the channel. So uh, that's probably going to change in the future. I'm probably, I've, I've opened an Etsy shop. I just don't have anything in it for sale. So what I'm hearing a lot of people uh, doing is really pretty cool. Uh, they're doing uh, like print farms. They're getting several printers, uh, doing things and stuff like that. Um, uh, I got a couple of uh, friends that make uh, prototypes for like machining and parts like gears and stuff like that. So they can actually uh, mold those and cast those in metal, carbon fiber, and so on and so forth. So the ev average everyday person that like you and I, uh, where we can make some cash and help pay for this hobby um, because it's expensive. You guys see what I print in the videos and everything. Uh, I'm not necessarily sponsored by anybody. There's nobody that backs up a truck to my front door full of resin or FDM or anything like that. I get some, um, I get some companies that, that do uh, want me to try out a product or something like that and do a review on it. But for the most part, uh, this is pretty much paid for by me. I mean, this is a labor of love here. Uh, and this is something that I pay for. So uh, I'm about ready to see what I can do to get a return, uh, an ROI, I guess you could say, as we say in the business world, off of uh, this to help me pay for the hobby. Uh, I do have a Patreon as well. So everything I get from the Patreon, which I think I got about 45 members, um, but everything that I get off of that pretty much just goes back into supplies and stuff for, for making, making a video and so on and so forth. So, um, uh, da, 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 da. all right. So, um, I will do, um, I will do a little bit of Q and a, uh, as we go along, uh, and I'll do more at the end and everything like that. And I'll try to answer as many things as I, uh, I, I as possible and stuff. So a couple of things, um, with making money, uh, you got to understand a couple of things. And Joseph, you brought this up uh, and that's perfect because that's one thing I'm going to lead into is uh, licenses. Um, so it is a very touchy subject with a lot of people. Um, but I can tell you this, if you are 
doing major production on 3D prints or anything like that, um, and you don't have a license, which most people don't because they're way ridiculous and very difficult to get, even if you can get them, uh, they're, they're just six figures or more at least. Um, so it, it's a matter of um, if you start mass producing things, it's just a matter of time until those people come after you. Um, it, it's going to happen. So be careful what you do. The best thing for you to do is either to hire an artist to make an original type of uh, product or something like that. Um, and that way you can, uh, you contract him, you pay him to make a product or something or a figure of your own design and sell it and print it and sell it that way. That's not, that's number one. The drawback to that is if it's not a major character or major type of um, something, you know, major pop culture type of thing, it probably won't sell. So there's a gray area in that, well, hey, can I go ahead and print my uh, Spider-Man thing and sell it on Etsy? Well, you can, but um, you don't own the rights to it. So just got to be careful with that. Um so, yes, when you're selling statues, as Joseph asked, when you're selling statues, theoretically, you're supposed to have a license for them. Um, you're infringing on that company's rights for that character. And, um, you know, it, it just really depends. However, um, if you're doing like painting commissions and stuff like that, same thing, all that applies. So the big thing that I see is as long as you do things like if you're doing a commission painting, which is another method of making money from 3d printing. And if you do like a couple of those here and there, then nobody's going to say anything really. Um, but if you start doing a lot of stuff and you're marketing it, you're marketing a business or anything like that, then you're opening yourselves to a, a, a possible, you know, cease and desist order or something like that. So that's something you really got to be careful with. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I really don't do anything like that right now at the moment. Um, Juan Jose Salazar Morales, uh, can I sell my prints on the internet without a license? I think I just kind of covered that. Now, if you have an original design, of course, you can sell everything under the sun, um, that you want to, you own the rights to it. Now, another thing too, is, uh, there's a lot of patrons out there, of course, I'm sure you guys are part of them and stuff. And like there's patrons out there that come up with original designs that require you to pay a monthly fee for the rights to sell print and sell them. Keep that in mind. Don't just go to a Patreon, print out some stuff or whatever like that and go think you're just going to mass produce it on Etsy and make a ton of money because that, that artist has the exclusivity of that product. So for like a nominal fee, and that's what I would ask that, that patron uh, owner, um, what do you pay every month in order to sell that product? Now, someone like Wicked and 3D Berserk and all those guys over there, uh, you know, they, they don't have a problem with you printing out and selling their stuff. However, that stuff is owned by pretty much Disney and Marvel. So you got to be really careful. And there's a, there's a fine line that you're going to cross whenever you start uh, tapping into like the DC, the Marvel line and things like that. Lord of the Rings, um, you know, God of War, video games, all that stuff right there. So just be careful when you do that. Um, Justin says, depend on where you go. I have four merchant license through Patreon. It is a monthly subscription, but I get new miniatures each month. Exactly. So um, it's big in the miniature uh, world that you pay that subscription to that Patreon every month, and it gives you exclusivity of selling it, print it, selling it, or whatever. That is the ultimate way to go. If you can back that, if you can get behind that, it takes all of the guesswork out of making money. So I know that if you're into FDM printing, um, like there's a lot of stuff out there through uh, Hex 3D and all these other companies where you just pay something like 10 bucks a month and they give you the rights in order to to film all or to uh, print all that stuff and sell it. So that is the ultimate way to go. Um, so uh, let's see. 
Uh, Darren says his best bet is to learn to CAD and model. Then you have no problem unless it's trade marketed. Exactly. Um, it's just like I was saying. Um, so it's best to create your own product. Um, that's what I want to do. So my goal is to eventually, um, I've always been intrigued with the like universal monsters sort of thing, like Dracula, werewolf and stuff like that. I always wanted to just make things like that to sell. But I mean, uh, that's an further down the road. I'm not even, <laughs> I'm not even knowledgeable on ZBrush. <clears throat> and I apologize if I cough a little bit. I've actually got a cough drop. I've been recovering from COVID and bronchitis and everything else. So I'm still got a little bit of a cough left. So forgive me if I do cough during, during this cast here. Um, I think I'm pronouncing this right. Stefan Sedgwick. Custom tabletop miniatures are generic enough to make and given the general mythological origins behind most of them, nobody can plausibly go after you. Correct, sir. So if you are like doing mythological creatures, uh, things like that, they can't be copywritten. Um, they can't be trademarked. Now, if you do a version of a mythological person, like let's just say hypothetically Marvel, well, not hypothetically, Marvel has Hercules, for example. If you do a printed version of that Hercules, then yes, they have that, that version trademarked. But as far as mythological heroes and stuff like that and miniatures, it's very, very difficult for anybody to claim right to that. So good one. Thank you, user 06. Um, uh, Dosao, I'm hopeful I'm pronouncing that right. There are Kickstarters where you have the option to back the project to get a merchant license. Yeah, kind of tapped on that a little bit. Um, so Kickstarters, um, I don't like really, I really don't like Kickstarters and I'll tell you why I've backed a couple of things before and, uh, the product didn't turn out the way it was supposed to on one occasion. And the other one, the project never come to fruition. And I played like hell trying to get my money back. So, um, uh, certain Kickstarters, you got to really kind of know who you're dealing with, I guess you could say. Juan also says, when you say original designs, it means new characters. Yes, correct, sir. Original design means, for example, I model Spider-Man from zero and I can sell it because it's my Spider-Man. That is incorrect. No matter what you do to design Spider-Man, no matter if you, if you put web guy or spider dude or something like that, if you are redoing or reissuing or printing that design, doesn't matter. That belongs to Marvel. They own the trademark to the design. They own the trademark to the to the uh, figure itself, to the name, all that good stuff. So that wouldn't be yours. It would be considered fan art if you made it for yourself. And if you if you made it for yourself, that's one thing. But if you're going out and you're like selling it, and you're just making copy after copy after copy and selling it, yeah, I mean that's you're opening up a can of worms there. Um, However, like if you're just doing like paint commissions uh, and what I mean by paint commissions is that someone either hires you to either print and paint a figure or they might send you a resin kit of some sort or something of that nature for you to redo like paint or something of that. So if you have a commission that you do, um, you're probably not going to get in trouble for it. But again, take into consideration that you might. It's very possible. All right. Hey, we have a, uh, I was hoping he would show, we have a uh, wicked art here. So these are, these guys are amazing. Um, I love these guys. Um, thank you for showing up, Gabriel. Um, so we're going to keep going along here. Uh, um, so Darren says your skill is your painting. I'm sure you cold charge to paint someone else's model, just like printing someone else's model. You're already on the ladder. Just take the next step. That is correct. Um, everybody say hi to Gabriel. Um, so if you are under a rock or something like that of some sort, uh, Wicked Art is my favorite patron. I'm going to plug him a little bit. I, I just got to because these guys are amazing. And um, so I started doing wicked um, paint ups. 
their models. I think the first one I did was the uh, Punisher Daredevil diorama. And um, that was one of the first ones I did. And I think they had like three or 400 patrons. And I know there's over several thousands now, but these guys are totally innovative. Uh, keep doing their thing. Uh, so much love to them. Um, and no, Gabriel does not pay me to do these videos for him. A lot of people ask me that, Hey, does wicked pay you to print stuff and, um, and, and do videos? The answer is no. Matter of fact, I still pay my $10 a month for my wicked subscription to their Patreon. Um, I do it because I love what they do. The artistry is there. Uh, they have a good product, great customer service. Uh, and they're a bunch of really great guys, really friendly guys. If you have any questions or anything like that, you go to them, uh, you contact them and they get things, they make things happen right away. So that's awesome. So, and we're going to get into a little bit more, um, in later videos about, about patrons and stuff like that. And I'll definitely feature these guys on there. So, <clears throat> well, thank you, sir. Uh, that diorama was crazy. Good. It was crazy period. <laughs> it was, um, it took a long time to do. And it was my first diorama that I'd done from wicked and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I got it sitting in my collection room. It's on the main, uh, case right in front lit up and everything. I love it. So, uh, I'll definitely, uh, keep that one for a very, very long time. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, so Dan says wicked need to think about making alternative bases that are simple. I think uh, they are doing that. Um, uh, Gabriel, can you chime in on the chat? Uh, I think that you guys are, they're doing different like uh, diorama bases where you can put things together. Uh, but they're also doing, I think they're going to be working on some simple stuff too as well. Um, Rebecca Williams, who is one of my patrons. Hi, Rebecca. Uh, I printed the No Way Home series from Wicked and had fun doing them. Absolutely. Um so yeah, I'm going to do a shameless plug. I do have a patron. Uh, you get absolutely nothing except for a private discord where you can come over and uh, show your work, ask questions. We do all kinds of chit chat over there. So yeah, um, uh, definitely look into that. <clears throat> Gabriel says we're trying to do some, but due to the design, sometimes it's not possible. That is true. Um, Gabriel, you want to put your website up there. So that is another thing that's kind of, I'm glad Gabriel's here because that'll lead me to uh, another thing on how to make money 3d printing and that's creating your own patron. So if you're an artist, dude, what are you waiting for? Get out there and show your work. Uh, get out there and develop your own patron. If you're, if you got a good product, a good design and make money that way by doing designs, um, you're, you're not making a physical product or anything like that. Uh, again, it's not easy. You have to develop a following. You have to be good at what you do. Uh, and you have to uh, service customers and make sure that like if you screw up on a design, you take care of it, answer questions. Gabriel can tell you, uh, I know what he goes through and it's a lot of effort on their part. Uh, they work with a bunch of different designers and uh, they eat, live and breathe uh, 3D printing. So uh, you've got to be committed to doing that because if you don't come up with a product by your timeline, like monthly or whatever, and you tend to be late or skip a month or whatever, then you're going to run off a lot of your patron members. So that is another way. Uh, a lot of people are doing that and they're making big bucks. So uh, definitely, if you're an artist, if you have a good product or something like that, look into that. Um. Yep. Joseph uh, just joined our Patreon. He's a new member. He just joined a couple of days ago. Um, Doc Holiday, How's it going, buddy? Um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, how long does it take to get my fixed Doctor Strange? <laughs> I think that's a, you might want to private message uh, Gabriel there, and I'm sure he'll take care of you very, very quickly. Yes, Clay, Clay Man, 
Cool, cool, catchy name. I just print and paint these because it keeps me sane. Great hobby. Absolutely. I agree with you. Um, I got into printing and I got into, you know, painting miniatures back 35 years ago, you know, with just toothpicks and nail polish. And I started 3D printing. And I just absolutely love it. So we're getting off a little bit of a topic here, but that's OK. Good conversation. So a couple of other things that you can do in order to make money. Uh, in 3D printing. So we got Patreon, we got um, uh, eBay, Etsy, we got print farming. Um, uh, there's a guy that uh, I don't know if you guys know him. He is, uh, I think he runs a site called 3D Print Farming, and he makes like desk organizers, like little things like lighter, um, lighter holders and cup holders and stuff like that. Something very simple. I mean, you don't have to have ZBrush knowledge. I mean, he's like Tinkercad, things like that, that are very intuitive and very easy to follow. And if you're looking at something like that, those are original designs. And he does not necessarily sell just physical product. He sells licenses every month for like $10 or whatever. And his Patreon members actually get the designs and allows them to make money. So everybody's happy. So... I saw him on, I, I follow him on TikTok and this guy, I can't remember his name. He's kind of like me. He's bald headed. And um, yes, I have no hair guys. I don't always wear this hat, but I don't want you to see my shiny Chrome dome. But um, he makes these products out of Tinkercad and other programs. They're his designs and the guy's cashing in, man. And he doesn't run a print farm necessarily. So Think about things like that, kind of things, think outside the box a little bit out of your wheelhouse of what you can bring to the table. Uh, if you're a good painter, uh, paint commissions, you know, there's a lot of good paint, paint commission commissioners out there. Uh, I will tell you uh, if you are one of those commissioners or if you are one of those uh, uh, guys who do commission jobs and stuff like that, make sure you get your money's worth out of it because I know a few people who paint uh, for commissions and everything like that. And it's a labor of love because they don't get paid a hell of a lot. And I can tell you honestly, from running this channel, uh, it takes a lot of your time in order to print and paint uh, figures or whatever. So by all means, if you're doing that, <coughs> excuse me, if you're doing that, then by all means, you know, get paid for it. Absolutely. Daryl says, when hollowing your models, how to make sure the inside is completely dry. So, again, we're a little off topic, but I'll answer your question. Um, so, when you're hollowing models, uh, a lot of people will hollow it out or they'll print it, take it, cure, uh, and, you know, wash it or whatever like that and set it out. And 15 minutes later, they're trying to cure it and everything like that. I usually wait overnight. I'm in no hurry. Uh, I usually wait overnight, wait for the, everything to dry on the outside. I've seen people take a uh, can compressed air and stick it, stick the needle or whatever like that up in there and do that. Um, that's getting a little bit too much. I just set the damn thing over there on the counter and let it air dry overnight and it's fine. Um, but as far as curing is concerned, if you print, if you haul your models and you print like I have told everybody you print like in 1.5 to 1.8 thickness, which is not very thick at all. And you cure it from the outside. The inside actually will cure itself too. You don't need to stick any LEDs up there or anything like that to cure it. If you want to do that for your own sake, by all means, go ahead. Um, but you, it's not necessary. Um, Doc says prints come out and I clean it really good. And I still get some glossy areas. Uh, if you're getting glossy areas, it's probably because your uh, IPA or your alcohol is dirty and you probably need to change it. Um, there are some um, there's some other little things that you can do. Like I take and I, all my stuff is sitting right here. When you are cleaning prints, that is your best friend. <laughs> no, you don't brush your teeth with it. Take an old toothbrush and scrub those prints and all that little glossiness that gets up underneath the cracks and crevices and stuff, you can get rid of it. Um, but I use that on every print. Um, Joe, 
Where in the world do you find time to do all of your projects? <laughs> oh, man. I work a full-time job. I'm in management. And I work a lengthy schedule throughout the week. So my days off, I sacrifice my time with my family or whatever like that in making videos for you guys and printing and painting and everything else. So I find the time. Uh, it's tough. Um, uh, I do have kids. I've got grandkids and everything like that. Uh, and I am married and uh, uh, it's tough. But uh, I spend countless times, countless hours on days off and um, even after work or before work and stuff, I'm always grinding. Uh, but I love it. I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, what's the difference in terms of licenses between selling prints and having a Patreon where I'm also selling 3d models? Well, there really is not one. Um, to be honest with you, people who are people who are on the, um, Patreon, people that have patrons and stuff like that. Um, and you don't have a license to it. You're, you're, you know, you're riding dirty, so to speak as we say here in the South, I mean, they, there's no telling what can happen to you. Um, yes, Dave, I have a three-year-old granddaughter and a two-month-old grandson. I'm not as young as you guys think I am. <laughs> um, Rebecca says, I sell a lot of things I print at my local marketplace and at craft fairs. Absolutely. freaking -lutely. So do you remember when the um, the little dragons, the little uh, print-in-place dragons came out? Those things were, like, huge. Um, hey, Gabriel, if you want to come on, man, um, there should be a thing on there that says request to uh, an invite or something like that. It should be, like, request or whatever to come on. If you hit that, dude, you can come on here. Um, so uh, I don't think there's a way I can send an invite to you, man. Let me see. Um, let me see. Nope. There's no way I can get you on here. Um, let me see. Yeah, there's no way I can get you on here, dude. Um, so, yeah. Um, craft fairs. Uh, Cons and stuff like that, small uh, things like that. You can. Oh, my wife's on here. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Not on YouTube. You're thinking about TikTok. Um, <clears throat> okay. So. Uh, so, yeah, like different conventions and different. Um, I'm losing my train of thought here, different conventions, marketplaces and stuff like that. You can definitely do all that stuff. But I was those dragons that came out, everybody had them like at marketplaces and um, things like that. So uh, yeah, um, those are big and that's a good, that's a good thing to do. Um, that's a good way to uh, make money there, uh, Rebecca. Uh, Hey, Gabriel, if you want to, man, send me your number. I'll put you on speakerphone and let everybody talk to you through here. Uh, text me uh, text me your number and I'll give you a call. We'll give you a call. Uh, Dave says, speaking of the license deals, I know 3D Berserkers had some issues with DC. Does Wicked have any issues coming at them with Marvel? Not to my knowledge. And let's keep it that way. So, um, yeah, uh, that's, again, that's something that, I don't get in their business uh, when it comes to that. That's all handled by Gabriel and handled by, um, by wicked themselves. So, um, so a lot of those dragons from Flexi factory, that's who did it. Flexi factory. So, yeah. Um, so Flexi factory, those guys, that is what I'm talking about. You want to make money, come up with a design like that. That is so innovative. And uh, those guys have what, 20,000 patrons. Can you imagine 20,000 patrons at 10 bucks a month? Oh my God. Uh, anyway. Um, 
You can also make good money from 3D sculpting, printing, general fantasy sci-fi accessories for cosplayers and LARPer. LARPers? Yes, you can. So that's another thing. Uh, a lot of people print helmets. I've seen a lot of these cosplayers print and paint helmets and swords and all kinds of stuff. And man, that stuff looks awesome. Uh, but they sell a lot of their stuff on Etsy and different forms like that. Uh, Etsy, you kind of fly under the radar. Um, there, th there has been some instances where people's uh, uh, pages got removed. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's people on there selling stuff like that. There's way too many for them to, to really um, uh, to, to go after. For commission, you charge per hour or per project. So when that let's get a little bit into commissions here. Um, and if you guys will, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a moment here at the end where we can ask questions. I'll get into more of that because I kind of want to cover a few things on this. So commissions, um, it's up to you. So uh, I know people who charge by the hour um, and people who charge by the job. So it depends on the complexity of the piece that you're, you're painting. I know a lot of people will get kits and stuff like that and do uh, prototypes for different companies. And um, they'll get paid by, I mean, I'm not sure how they get paid by, but they, um, they get paid handsomely enough to do these prototypes. So for example, if you are, if you're a commissioner and you um, are going to produce a lot of these custom statues, which we'll get into a little bit more at another, another time, but, um, hey, Jerry, how you doing, buddy? Um, but if you're doing commissions like that, just painting commissions, it's it's just totally up to you. Um, I personally would just do it by the job because if you do it by an out by the hour, um, it's kind of like you're on the honor system with a, with a client because if you're if I'm saying that I'm spending forty hours on a piece and I'm that's probably low uh, on a prototype piece or something like that, then they're going to have to take my word for it. And so I would feel better knowing that I just quoted them one general price and I just take and just do the job itself. So that's just my preference. Um, so uh, terrain is my currently my best sellers right now. Th that's good um, because that's something that, no one can track you. No one can claim licensing to or anything like that. Um, that is something that um, a lot of people are into, man. A lot of people are uh, into gaming. I'm not a gamer. I've never been a gamer. I had a lot of friends that played D&D &D and Warhammer and everything else. But I was the guy that painted their friggin' miniatures for them, you know, <laughs> while they played these games. So, um but yeah, um, that's absolutely cool right there. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Want to start craft fairs, but my comic items I've been putting into a friend's comic and toy store. We do consignment deals. That's another way. Absolutely. And that's what I want from you guys. You guys have ideas about making money. Uh, share them with the group. Uh, share them on, uh, in the chat. That way kind of everybody knows that Hey, I mean, give me some good ideas to make some money. The, the biggest thing that I wanted to really touch on in this video is how to make the hobby pay for itself. Um, because I have, I'm sitting here in front of me and I've got one, two, three, and then back of me, I've got a bunch of printers. Um, these were provided to me by sponsors, by people not necessarily paying me, but doing, giving me printers to review and saying, keep the printer, blah, blah, blah. Um, if I did not have that, you would not have a YouTube channel <laughs> because uh, there's no way I could afford these printers um, just based off of what I do. Um, but the resin, um, uh, I get some from some companies and I'll give a shout out to uh, Nova 3D. Those guys are phenomenal. I've been testing out a lot of their resin. Uh, Linant, uh, these guys are on a uh, uh, Chinese uh, holiday or Chinese New Year right now. Um or I'm, I'm sorry, my wife will correct me. It's Lunar New Year. Is that better, honey? Uh, <laughs> but they're on Lunar New Year right now. But these guys um, have been providing me with some supplies in order to uh, create what they 
uh, with, you know, for them and promote their products and everything. At the same time, it's helping me out as well. Um, so awesome. Um, what would you say the ideal new printer for a one six prints is, man, there's so many out there and I know that everybody says Saturn. Uh, I do not own any Elgu Saturns. I own a Mars and that's it. Um, I've got the Lenant base AK printer and I love it. Um, and I'm not saying that because I was provided with a printer. Um, but this thing is awesome, but there are so many out there. A lot of people like the Saturns. They got a good reputation. So I would say Saturn as well. Um, I'm not going to plug anything for any cubic. They can kiss my ass. Um, I think their customer service sucks. I think their products they're putting out now sucks and I'll never promote anything for them. So if you're asking me, my personal opinion, stay away from any cubic, uh, go with, uh, someone like, uh, was it Hallett or Halo or whatever? I think that, uh, Jerry, if you're still on here, I think you, uh, you, uh, have a uniformation, um, printer as well. And that a lot of people love those. So definitely look into something like that, but look at what people are using and having success with. Don't look at what's popular. Um, because if you look at what's popular, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to come up, you're going to be in a four rude awakening is all I can say. Um, so yes, Gabriel says the Saturn S is a beast. I have heard the same thing. Um, so uh, that is the go-to printer from right now, from what I understand. And as far as FDM printers, I'm going to give you guys some love out there too. Um, and I still got my CR10 over here. <laughs> and that thing's a dinosaur, but it's still huge print volume and still kicks ass. Um, and I know Uncle Jesse, uh, I wish he was on here, but I know he is an Elgu guy but I've heard a lot of good things about their printers. I really want that Neptune, that big Neptune that just came out. That thing is, looks awesome. Uh, but technology is changing um, all the time. So there are going to be a, they're going to be a lot of innovation and everything like that when it comes to 3d printing. Uh, the, the big thing now is the bamboo printers. I don't like them. I've seen a lot of issues with them. I get it. They're super fast and everything, but they're not consistent or efficient. Uh, and for me, um, like I got a print that's actually finishing up right now. You can probably hear it in the background and it's for the, uh, the cable print that I am doing. And you guys are going to love this from Alvaro Stuardo. Um, this thing took 34 hours and that's fine with me because I know when I'm done, I'm going to get a very good print out of it. Really good detail. So I'm not sweating it. So I don't care about speed. I want efficiency. And if I get a printer that does the detail work for me and efficient, I could care less about printing or the printing speeds. So that's a touch and go thing with a lot of people. If you're wanting a printer that's fast, that's, that's just totally up to you because I could care less. I mean, that's just my preference, but everybody has their own thing. Um, Dave says, right on about any cubic. Absolutely. Daryl has a Mars and a Saturn. Um, yeah, so any cubic's customer service, I just, I've had problems with them. And I'll tell you a story. I got in uh, any cubic M3 Max from them. Um, and it's just been a headache. And I'll just, I'll leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. I won't go into it on here. That's for another time. <laughs> um <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. Let's answer a couple of questions. Kitty, Quitty Tech, Kitty Tech has the best support hands down. I've heard that. Um, so yeah, um, I'm curious to maybe look into their products. Um, the Creality FDM printers. My first printer was a. Um, what the hell am I thinking of? It's behind me here. It's a. Uh, uh, buh, 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 buh. Ender three. Duh. Um, so yeah, Ender 3 was my first printer and I still got it. Um, my first resin printer was an Elgu Mars and I still have it. It's sitting up there and I still run it. Um, love the Elgu Neptune 2s and 3 Pro. Dave says going for 3 Plus or Max for size soon. Yes, that's um, that's what I, I would love to be doing that too. I, I'd love to get on it too. Um, Beige Blend says he'll be selling his Wicked Prints at the Tidewater Comic Con in May. 
okay, do, do one favor for me. Give the artist credit. So if you are selling products um, by an artist or whatever, like Wicked, give them, give them some cred. I mean, I mean, that's, that's the respectful thing to do. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Gabriel, you know, wouldn't mind having a few more uh, patron members for his patrons. Would you Gabe? So um, absolutely. Always, always give the artist credit. And in these videos that I do, uh, I try to give credit where credit is due to the artist, but that's one thing that is a respectful thing to do um, is give the artist credit uh, on their work. So absolutely. Um, and that means like, you know, if you're selling your products at a comic con or at a marketplace or anything like that. Um, and if you're selling, you're selling physical products, whatever, put it like a little placard card or something like that design courtesy of wicked art, wicked 3d art, and put a link, maybe a link to their, to their website or something like that. That way people can look into that and, um, you know, see the cool designs and Hey, here's another thing that could lead into more business for you because if that person does not have a 3d printer and they go onto that website and they go, Holy shit, this guy has, Oh man, that juggernaut or, or Craven or whatever like that. I want you to print that for me. Dude, you just made some more money and you gave, you know, uh, you know, Gabriel and uh, some more possible, more possible business. So absolutely. Um, and that's with any artist. So, uh, like Alvaro Stuardo right now, I love this guy. He doesn't produce a heck of a lot because he takes his time on the designs. But, um, I mean, if you're a good artist, you should get paid for your work. I mean, is, is that, is that correct? <laughs> right. You put in the time for the designs and you sell this stuff. You should get credit for it. Nobody else should be crediting your work. And that's run that runs rampant on like Etsy and some of these Facebook forums where you get people that'll be using their design or their pictures or whatever like that for and taking credit for themselves. That's just bogus. So don't do that. Dave says, I put their logos on my business cards, models by. That's great. Jerry says, any cubic photon model X is my go-to, but now it's not reading my Chi2 box files. Uniformation GK2 is an 8K, but the VAT sides and locks wished it lifted straight up. Yeah, so I've got um, I've got the Uniformation GK1 here in front of me. Um, I've never printed the first thing off of it. I can't get that thing to work for the life of me. Um, however, I will say this. The, the people from Uniformation have reached out to me on a couple of occasions uh, to help me troubleshoot it uh, out of their own free will. Uh, and that's that speaks volumes for me. I just haven't got off my lazy ass in order to try and get the thing to print right. Uh, I've just been so busy. So uh, I'm going to look into that and, and I'm actually going to do a review on this, uh, on their printers and stuff like that and give them credit. Like we talked about, credit where credit is due. Um, so absolutely. Um, but I've heard a lot of people say they, they make some really good printers. Um, seen a lot of mass stuff about the bamboos, but I own an X, an X, oh, X1C for over four months and it's been great. Awesome. Um, I mean, it, get what, get what works for you. Is Nova three, Nova 3d better than Soraya tech? Uh, I would say mm, they're not quite there yet. Uh, Soraya Tech makes some damn good resin. Uh, they make strength, uh, strength, uh, what do they call it? Strength inhibitor resin and all kinds of other stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't think they're quite there yet. Um, so yeah. Oh, also... Uh, I'm going to give a plug to Jerry here. Jerry is 3D HP. He's been kind enough to come on here in the chat with us. Uh, go over and check this guy out. Jerry does some amazing work. He not only does 3D printing, he does a lot of, um, oh my God, Jerry, it's on the tip of my tongue. Help me here. A laser engraving and stuff like that. Uh, he does a hangout every Saturday at one o'clock where he gets a bunch of his friends uh, and they all get together in a chat room and talk about things 3D printing wise and everything. So go check Jerry's site out. 
Um, he's got um, a lot of good knowledge over there. Jerry's been doing this for quite some time. Um, so um, I would say I would say that Soraya Tech probably edges out Nova 3D because I've used both. I'm using the Nova Tech right now. Matter of fact, let me show you. You guys are going to like this. Uh, uh, Gabriel, if you're watching, sir, uh, pay attention to the screen. <laughs> and look at this big behemoth right here. This is the Optimus Prime model. I printed this in Novatech 3D, uh, and it, I dropped it twice, and it's not broken. <laughs> but um, my wife and I, at 300% to scale, uh, what was it we figured we measured this thing would be what close to six feet tall with the base, the big base. I'm going to do the big base. Uh, if I was going to do the big base, I'm going to do the big base. I'm not going to do the little small thing. But I understand now, Gabriel told me earlier that they have a, uh, a base for Megatron and uh, the Optimus Prime to go together. And oh my God, it looks very nice. Very, very nice. You guys are going to like this. But um, yeah, this is a huge model. This thing is the size of a softball. I mean, so if you can imagine, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> My wife says we talked about that like three days ago. We did. Um, but I think it was close to around six feet tall with the base uh, and at 300%. So, yeah. Um, absolutely. <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh... All right, let's see here. Uh, give me just a second here. Yes, this is a Wicked file. So if you're a part of the Patreon over there, you get this one. Uh, and then Megatron is uh, also uh, Megatron is also coming out, what, in February, uh, Gabriel? So, yeah. Um, but let me show you this big guy right here. And I've also printed this. And Novatech 3D, and this is not. Uh, this is not all assembled here because it's just that big. Uh, but this is the cable from Alvaro Stuardo here, and that thing is a beauty. Uh, now I'm working on this one right now. The base is humongous. Uh, it's actually I had to go in the mesh mixer and slice it up about three or four times in order to do this. So keep in mind, if you are looking to make money and you're doing commissions, you're selling prints and stuff like that, think about this whenever you are printing, shipping, because big models like this are not easily shipped. Um, my recommendation is to install magnets uh, or don't assemble the pieces yet or something like that. Um, but like for the heads and everything, you're going to need to like install magnets for your customer in order just to pop that on there. Uh, I find it it's going to be very difficult to ship a model of this size to a client without it getting broken, especially as a 3d print, because these things are hollow, they're light, they're brittle. Uh, and especially if you paint, you spend countless hours painting something like this and put it in a box and ship it and it gets smashed to hell Customer's going to want a refund and you just wasted your time. So keep that in mind as well. Absolutely. Uh, so that is one thing. As you can see behind me here, this uh, Punisher that I'm doing, this is, this. I'm a Punisher fan, so this is just for me. Uh, but this is from uh, Bow87, B-O-U-87. I'm not sure if he has a... Uh, a patron or not, but he, I've done a couple of his uh, figures in the, uh, in some videos too. And he does some really cool stuff. Um, uh, Dan says, I read that Optimus Prime has some problems on the window. Uh, Gabriel, do you know if that, if you had any issues with that? Um, if you did or whatever like that, Anytime you have a, an issue with a model from Wicked or anything like that, you contact those guys. They will take care of it. Uh, I promise you that. They're super, super guys. Um, 
Hey, Paul, how you doing, buddy? Um, Paul is Paul Burgess is also a new member of my patron. Uh, and uh, Paul does some incredible work, too, as well. Paul is one of those that can probably make a pretty decent uh, side hustle from um, from uh, uh, commissions. He does some incredible painting jobs. So Daniel wants to know, is this my career or side hustle? Amazing work either way. Thank you, Daniel. This for me is a side hustle. Uh, I have a full-time job that pays me very, very well to do a job. Um, but this is my passion. This has always been my passion. My wife is my biggest supporter. Um, and I'm not saying that because she's on here on, uh, on, on this uh, chat or anything, but because it's true. And I could not have done any of this without her support. So, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I would love to... I would love to do this as a full-time career, but it's just not in the cards right now. Um, 10,795 subscribers is amazing, but in order to do something like this, like on YouTube or whatever, I mean, I'm going to have to be up in the hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And um, I just did my taxes today. And I don't know if I want to be a 1099 employee. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So what happens if the customer didn't like the painting? That's something I'm afraid of. So here's the deal. If you are a commissioner and you are doing painting for a customer, give them plenty of pictures as updates. So that way they can't come to you and say, well, it looks like crap. I'm not paying for that. I want a refund. So it is always good as a commissioner to, if you're painting a head sculpt, and uh, customer uh, wants to know, uh, just give them plenty of updates. Uh, and if they want something changed, uh, if it's not too drastic, change it. If it is a major change that they want, again, get paid for your work. Um, so I've seen commissioners that if it's something major that's out of the realm of the normal paint job they want done, like say, for example, cable has the, the goofy eye right here. If you paint it normal, and then the customer says, I don't like it. I want the OSL effect on his eye. Charge them for it because they didn't ask for it. And that's out of the realm of the norm when it comes to painting the eye. So, again, get paid for your work. Don't do shit for free. Um, but absolutely. So plenty of pictures. Um, keep the customer informed. Communication. And you 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 should be okay. Um Absolutely. Um, quarter scale too rich for me. No, dude, that's the way to go, man. Do quarter scale. No, this, uh, this opt if you're talking about this Optimus Prime, this damn thing is one third scale. It's massive. Um, and I can, I couldn't imagine doing this thing, you know, like human size. Well, hell at one third scale, it is human size almost. Um, Let's answer a couple of questions. Jerry says at Christmas, I refunded for a model that head got broke before getting it back in the mail and got burned. USPS claim made and still waiting. Hopefully they pay. Yeah. So that's the thing. Take into consideration too, that when you are doing models or when you're doing 3d prints, especially in resin, because it's a different animal than FDM that you run the risk of breakage. Um, always pack well. So it, it, if you're doing FDM models, that's one thing. Like these guys I see that doing these helmets and cosplay and everything, um, uh, they, it's a little bit better because FDM is more firm, sturdier than, than resin, uh, and just pack it well. I mean, that's all I can say, really. Just, I can go about this all day long, but you're always going to have some breakage. Get ready for it. So if you're in the neighborhood of doing – uh, paint commissions or anything like that, pack it well, um, reinforce it, you know, do whatever you got to do to make sure it gets there to the customer. Uh, okay. My recommendation, um, do not ship international, uh, because it, it's going to get, it's going to get messed up. There's, it's a 99.9% .9 ratio that whatever you're printing or shipping or whatever like that is, is going to get, is going to get jacked up. So, um, <clears throat> Rebecca says the green goblin from wicked is 24 inches tall. 
and she has it for sale for 250 bucks if there's anybody ta or any takers on it <laughs> so hey absolutely um yes so if you have any problems with wicked models absolutely write uh those guys and um they will be glad to take care of you um let's see Uh, Joseph says I'm retired. 3D printing for me is fun and makes enough cash to keep me in supplies, new printers. That's, that's, that's another thing. I mean, if it, the way I look at it is if it's the hobby's paying for itself, then you're doing great. Um, if you're making a little bit of extra cash or something like that on the side, then that's awesome. But, um, if you're one of those who just prints every damn thing under the sun and you guys can't see right now, but the other side of my room here is it's like, almost floor to ceiling of prints that I haven't finished yet. But um, if you like doing this and um, you want it to pay for itself, sell a little bit, you know, and um, you know, just, just make a little side hustle for yourself and a little fun money. I mean, there's, that never hurt anyone. Um, and at the same time, I know I'm probably going to get roasted in some comments saying that I'm encouraging um, copyright infringement. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying get out there and, produce something of Spider-Man or Superman or Wonder Woman or Batman and make 150 of them and make a ton of cash off of it. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you have uh, an original design, produce the hell out of it. It's yours. I mean, do what you got to do. Make a Patreon of it. Get people to pay for it. Get people to pay for your service. If you're doing paint commissions, that's your thing. All right. So, I mean, who am I to judge? Um, if, if, if you're, mass producing copyrighted stuff. I'm telling you, eventually you're going to get nailed. Uh, some people go for a long time without it, but eventually they're going to come down on you. Um, but just be careful. I mean, you know, just, just be mindful. And um, if you're doing fan art for yourself, that's one thing. Nobody gets going to say anything to you. Like everything that I produce in these videos, everything that I print and I paint is mine. I haven't, I don't sell anything. It's all part of my collection, um, but it, it's one of those things where I just don't sell. Um, Doku, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, Beige Blends, I did a Henry Cavill sculpt that is almost full scale. I'd be interested to see that thing, man. Um, Daryl says, I always ask for 50% down on things I print and paint for people. That way, if they cancel or change too much, I can still make something off it. So that's correct. So if you were doing commissions, um, definitely ask for something up front because you got people that'll balk on you. Um, you know, it's, it's a deposit. I mean, for you to start the job and everything, you got to kind of pay for supplies that way you won't necessarily be out anything. So that's a good practice right there. If you're just selling directly off something like Etsy or eBay or something like that, then you're going to get paid through PayPal or Venmo or something like that up front. So just make sure that you ship out on time too, as well. Um, uh, do I do, do you do everything same material on a print or do you do a mix? For example, I tend to do bases and FDM if they're not too detailed. So yes. Oh, um, if I have a piece that is um, very well detailed I'll probably go all resin, but if it's something, especially like a big piece and um, I want to save time and a little bit of resin, I'll go FDM. Um, like the, the green Hulk that I did from Wicked, uh, the base was FDM um, because it wasn't highly detailed uh, necessarily. And I just, I needed to do that in um, FDM and to, in order just the resin, the resin wouldn't hold up over time because of the weight. Um, the other thing I'm doing the Hulk and Hulk buster, uh, and my wife calls it the surfboard. This thing is like the base is four feet long and it's all FDM. There's no way I could print it in resin. If I tried to pick it up, it would bow and crack and bust and I'd be pissed off and throwing stuff. Um, but that one is coming up too, by the way. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So if you're, if you're printing an FDM, you don't necessarily, I mean, you want to be careful in shipping, uh, but you don't have to be nearly as careful as resin. Resin is a booger bear. Now, think about this. If you um, 
decide to be one of these to make you come up. Maybe you come up with an original design, um, what, whatever it may be. Consider casting it. So what that means is you make a mold, a silicone mold, and you cast it through casting resin. And then you sell kits that way. Those are pretty popular. They're expensive, but they're pretty popular. And they're less susceptible to breakage in shipping. So keep that in mind, too. And that way you don't have to keep printing over and over and over again. You make the one mold, you cast it, make a kit, whatever, and you can continue doing that over and over and over again. So, uh, and you can wear the molds out. Um, let me catch up on some questions here because I got a lot here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, da, da, da. Uh, do you need a big machine to make these big models like yours to have a model X as possible with this machine? Yes and no. <laughs> so you can make some pretty big pieces, uh, but you need to probably chop them up in mesh mixer. If you don't know which me what mesh mixer is, look it up. It's a very intuitive type of program. It's free where you can go in and you can plain cut items uh, and to smaller pieces in order to fit on your build plate. So I do that quite a bit. This cable base, holy crap, I didn't realize how big it was. So there's one piece on here, and you're going to see it in a future video. I had to slice it into four spots, four slices, and it's crazy big. So you can print some stuff, some bigger stuff on like those type of build plates. But if you really want to go for the big stuff, you're going to need a bigger printer like a Jupiter. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say M3 Max. This uh, Lenant deck that I've got is massive, uh, and I can print some pretty good uh, prints on there as well. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Yeah, Dave sent a Punisher statue, got broke. What's your favorite printer, and what would you suggest to buy as a first printer for 1-6 scale? Uh, we kind of hit that on that earlier. Uh, the Saturns are really good. I like the Lenant base. Um, uh, Creality has the, the Halo, I think Halo or Hallet. I can't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, learning Blender is on your next to do list. Absolutely. I would love to learn ZBrush. My wife bought me a tablet a couple of years ago and I've not used the thing. She's going to kill me if I don't start using it. Um, uh, la, la, la. uh no, I do not sell my uh, statues or pre pieces that I make. Oh, uh, yes. So that's one of the reasons why I print is because statue prices have gotten ridiculous. So I had a guy I saw today on, um, it might've been TikTok or Instagram or whatever. And uh, there was a Batman, really nice piece. And I asked about it, is the file for sale? And he's like, no, I'm selling kits. Okay. Just curiosity. How much is a kit? Now keep in mind, a kit is a, resin piece that's not printed basically a lot of times they come unprepped or anything like that he said nine hundred dollars are you kidding me nine hundred dollars and then there's a lot of these statues out there that are a thousand twelve hundred dollars and by the time you get done paying an extra three or four hundred dollars for shipping go out and buy you a couple of printers and print the damn thing yourself get somebody to design it get wicked or whatever like that. Somebody to design your stuff for you, an original piece or something that nobody else has in their collection and make your own stuff and still save you some money. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. My wife says your time and expertise are our value too. Not just the printers and materials. Exactly. Get paid for your work. Um, how do you put your models together before painting and gluing? Ben wants to know. So with my models, there's sometimes I put them all together as a complete uh, figure before I start to paint. And in many cases, I will print, uh, I will paint, I will paint pieces separately and then glue together. I use a two part epoxy um, because super glue will wear out over time. And the next thing you know, a little Spider-Man's hand will fall off or whatever, you know, after a few years. Um, super glue I tend to use for very tiny pieces, um, but I use I usually use a two-part epoxy. It's called BSI. 
uh, Bob Smith Industries, I think. Um, so yeah, I use that. Uh, I use Slicer if I need to cut something and make sure to save my life. Yes. I just like paying others for the models so they come ready in parts for me. There you go. There's a business there for somebody. Well, not business, but there is a hustle right there for somebody uh, to make money in 3D printing. So like I said, there's always people out there that are they they're not necessarily artistic. Um, doesn't mean they're they're bad people or anything, but they're just not very artistic, or they don't have the printer, they don't have the time, they don't have the resources, or they just don't want to fool with it. And that's where you would come into effect in order to print a piece for them and make money. Um, so let's see. Uh, I recently printed that Doctor Strange cape behind you, but my machine is so small, I had to do it in 12 pieces. Here's a little secret. This was printed on the Photon Mono X behind me, a smaller build plate. I also printed that damn thing in 12 pieces. Trust me, it was a booger, um, and I never want to do that again. <laughs> um, plenty of filler, plenty of primer, and plenty of filler, and plenty of primer, and sanding, and repeating, and all this other stuff. It takes a while, but the end result uh, turned out pretty good. Um, so yeah, you, you, you're not going to get a good model unless you put some elbow grease into it. I'm sorry. It just doesn't roll off. The, even like for me, for other, there's painters out there that are 10 times better than me. They put in the effort. It, that's the only way you're going to get a really, truly good model. And patience is one of them. Uh, patience is one of the things that you have to have in order to, to, uh, to, to do this. I mean, you're going to have trial and error, just like everything else in life, but Absolutely. Um, let's see. Got a question. Paul wants to know if I ever have the hat on backwards. No. <laughs> this is for you, Paul. Paul is a patron member, so I will, I will do what my patron members ask of me. <laughs> I feel like a goof having it like this. All right, so uh, what would Wicked charge, for example, of, to design a model? I doubt Wicked would because they're so busy with their artists um, making their own models. I mean, that's a, that, that stuff takes a long time. Um, oh, Gabriel, I'll answer it for you. Normally, we would not design any, uh, something by commission because we're trying to get everything done for our patrons. Still, if you get a nice artist, it'll go around 900 to 1200 US dollars for a model. He is exactly right. I have seen artists to charge as much as $5,000 or more, uh, depending on the artist that they're in demand, if they're that damn good. Um, but there are some people out there that it just, yeah, they'll, they'll take you to the cleaners when it comes to the design. Mike says, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Um, Jerry, <laughs> super glue with activators. So yeah, let me show you. Let me turn this hat around because it's bugging me. Um, so yeah, I use, I use the same thing. I use this right here, this BSI, uh, quick set right here for like super glued parts, but I, I use this, this is a two part epoxy to glue my models. Um, this stuff is $22.99 for a total of nine ounces of it. And this is, that's what I use right there to glue all my models together because it works. It's great. The JB weld stuff like that sucks. Don't, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money on that because it's not very good. Um, have you checked out Nico industries? They have a new subscription for $10 a month and have a lot of cosplay and statues. Yes. Um, I am going to be doing some cosplay type stuff, helmets and everything. I actually, I did one kind of like a test piece uh, later uh, earlier last year and it, it, it's, it did okay. I have a lot to learn uh, when it comes to doing cosplay, but uh, absolutely. I'm going to um, want to try and do some stuff like that. Cause they've been doing some really kick-ass stuff uh, on there. Um Let's see. So far, I've done Gambit and Archangel and Mega 8K. It was nice printing the wing parts in one plate. Yes. So I've got Archangel up here. I did him in one six scale. 
And I did his wings in one piece on the Lenance deck because of the Z axis is so high on it. Uh, it's a lot higher than the Jupiter and then on the M3 Max. So, yes, that's one reason why I really love this printer. Um, George Carlin said it best. When you hit a certain age, spin that hat back to the front. Yep, absolutely. Um, you can go to Fiverr and get quotes. Can I tell you a little bit of something about Fiverr? Stay away from them. <laughs> they, they, yeah, just find you a reputable artist. If you are wanting to get something designed uh, for you to produce or to sell or whatever, just look on the Facebook groups. There's a lot on there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that can do something very, very cool for you rather than fiber. Um, I just don't, I'm not, I'm not big on those. Check CG Trader for individuals who can help make a custom model. Good, good, good suggestion there, Daryl. Daryl is exactly right. So if you're looking for a designer, go on to there. Um, yeah. Mike says, I glued my part to my hand with Activator. <laughs> Only you would do that, Mike. Only you would do that. Um, uh, yes, Jerry, most designers are swamped. Um, commissions can be very funny. Um, they can be uh, very tricky. Uh, again, I've seen in the realm of $200 for an artist all the way up to like almost $10,000, um, depending on the artist. Uh, if you're getting someone like Martin Canale, who does work for Sideshow, Martin's probably going to charge you around four or five grand um, because he is that damn good. Um, but me personally, and I'm not saying this because he's on the group chat, um, I think these artists from Wicked, oh my God. Look, let me show you this. And I have this printed here and I'm, I'm going to finish it. No one, I have not seen anyone do a Linda Carter Wonder Woman with that likeness on there. I mean, that is spot on, dude. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And that's done by the 3D Berserk guys. So whoever did this design right here is a phenomenal artist. I don't, I wish I knew who they were. Gabriel, you're going to have to tell me who these guys are, man. I mean, I, I'm just, I know Mauricio and that's about it. <laughs> but I mean, these guys are just phenomenal. I mean, it's just the detail on this from the hair to the body um, everything is just the, the anatomy, uh, everything. If, if you, if you're like me and you follow art and I've followed art all my life, um, you look for a couple of things when it comes to a figure, you look for a proportion and anatomy. Um, and it, they gotta be spot on, uh, especially when you, <laughs> Gabriel says they never leave the basement. <laughs> so you gotta have those couple of things right there. If you want to do a figure proportion and, and and it has to be anatomically correct if you do if one of those is working and the other one is not you're screwed your your model's not going to look right um there are however different renditions based on comic images so like let's say artist john ramita john ramita jr uh he does he's one of my favorite punisher artists and he's right there uh this guy is weird looking but that's an artist interpretation um, so if you're putting that from a 2D standpoint to a 3D standpoint, it's up to you to make sure they, they job right. And it's hard to do. So if you're looking at a comic book picture, let's look at Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane has an amazing detail factor in his Spider-Man figures or in Spawn or whatever. And you try to incorporate that and put that into a 3D picture or a 3D rendering it is very difficult. So if you can find an artist that can do that, that's amazing. I mean, that, that's what you got to do. I mean, uh, you're going to be paying for it. So some of those guys do it better than others and they charge for it. They are charging for their work, their artistry, uh, and you can't fault them for it. So if you got somebody that charges you three or $400 for a, a, a commission or rendering or whatever, and you're satisfied with it, that's all that matters. But if you're wanting something super highly detailed to make money off of, to produce or anything like that, be prepared to pay for it. <laughs> um, and yes, they have a team of awesome sculptors. 
I think Gabriel is probably not telling me any of the, who they are because in fear that I'm going to be like, try to commission them out or something. <laughs> but yeah. Um, uh, the, 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 let's see. So yeah, uh, the, the Dan 3d print. So the BSI, if you look at my YouTube channel, I do have an Amazon link for it. Uh, I don't know if you can get Amazon products in your country, if you're in a different country or whatever. Uh, but you know, check that out. Um, yes. Clay says the way AI art is coming along, you might be able to text to 3d print soon. I'm telling you, man, uh, if you're an artist, if you are an artist, you are sitting on a gold mine right now because you think about five years ago when people were doing traditional sculpting from clay. And I still have a couple of pieces out in the collection room that were all sculpted by hand, by hand. These guys get in there, they mold it with everything like that, shape it with sculpting tools. And I, 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 I'm a sculptor and Man, I mean, that, that was big. All of your Bowen stuff, all your Bowen statues early on, 99.9% .9 of that stuff was all hand sculpted. Uh, a lot of your early sideshow stuff was, and now nobody does it. So nobody really traditionally sculpts anymore. It's all done with ZBrush, Blender, or some type of digital program. Uh, AI is coming along, and it's pissed off a lot of artists, but it's the future. Unfortunately, I think it is. Um, I think it's going to be one of those things that's going to just continue to evolve. Um, and if you're an artist, get behind uh, and learn as much as you can. Put yourself out there. Uh, keep learning. Never stop learning. And um, you know, you're going to make yourself uh, available. Um, wow. Gabriel says they have about 30 artists and most of them are Colombians. <laughs> Wicked is not just one dude. I know uh, Gabriel and I chat a lot, quite a bit um, about just different things and about upcoming models. And of course, I throw my suggestions out there and stuff. And but uh, yeah, he has a great team of artists. How they do it, I have no idea. It's a lot to go into that Patreon uh, since they're doing three. And plus they're adding all these extra models with the video games, with the movies and everything else. Um, but again, you don't have to, they started small. I think when I first come aboard uh, with Wicked and did the first model, I think they probably had about three or 400, 300 or 400 patrons. And they were taken off. And that was a lot back then. I remember us talking and it was like, holy crap, we're almost at 500. We're almost at 500. I'm, I'm like cheering them on, you know, I'm like, oh man, that's awesome. That's great. Now they're in the thousands. <laughs> so um, if you, you, there's three things, if, if you're going to make money in 3D printing, there's three things, there's three factors that you have to have. You have to have the product. You have to have good customer service and you have to be consistent. So those three things right there, if you were not any of those three, you won't make it. Um, and the same thing, well, if, if you are producing products to sell, uh, you have to be, you have to have the product, you have to have a, a good customer service, um, and then you have to be consistent with what you're printing and producing to sell. You have to meet the demand of what people want. So like, again, I'll go back to those 3D printed dragons that were huge for a while. Um, uh, Flex 3D come out with something different. And that was the hot item. I think it was the, uh, first there was the dragons and there was a print in place, uh, animal characters and stuff. And then that ghost, that, how crazy is that? I mean, they made a bundle off of that. 20,000 patrons paying $10 a month. You do the math. All right. So that in itself right there, it can be done, but, crawl i mean crawl before you walk start out small be innovative think of something that you like to do first off don't necessarily do things that people demand from you because you're going to drive yourself crazy uh but do something that you like to do and put it out there as a product and roll with it man i mean there's there's no reason why you can't 
Um, haven't seen one single model on SD, SW Star Wars 3D models that isn't totally awesome. Yes. So that is it. If you're a Star Wars fan, why are you not a patron member of their Star Wars patron? I mean, unbelievable stuff they, they got over there. Um, so, yeah. Um, Gabriel says we'll introduce the whole team soon. We're not pretty, so we do not have much camera time. But, yeah, you will see the whole team soon. That is awesome. And, hey, would you like to see these guys on a live stream of the Creative Collector? Give me a hell yeah in the chat section right now. <laughs> if we get enough, Gabriel, you you, you, you got to have the guys on here, at least a few of you, man. Um, uh, do a wicked team sculpt in superhero costumes with the designers' heads. Oh, my God, Jerry, that would be awesome. That would be cool. Gabriel, Gabriel, you got to do it, dude. Everybody in superhero costumes. Yes, that would be awesome. So that 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 that's it right there. You got to do a video with all the designers in superhero costumes. Everybody up there. That would be awesome. And do them on my live feed. We'll get more. We'll get people out there. Jeez, all the hell yes I got. <laughs> Oh, and Sailor Moon costumes, man. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, my God. That would, you guys are a trip. Oh, my God. Oh, design it and they will come, Jerry says. Yes, sir, they will. That's a great idea, Gabriel says. Hey, if trust me, this this guy is crazy enough. He This is why we get along so well. He's just as crazy as I am to do some shit like that. So, uh, oh my God. Um, uh, yes, I would love to see uh, Wicked do the uh, 3D, the classic monsters as well. And I think that would be awesome to see their take on that. Um, but one thing at a time, I know Gabriel's like me. He's got the hamsters in the wheel, man. And, um, they've got a lot of stuff up the pipeline that you guys are going to be excited about and uh, go through all these hell yeahs here. <laughs> we have hairy legs. <laughs> oh my God. This is crazy. Uh, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you offline, Gabriel, about that. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Donnie says, I started my Etsy because I am obsessed with Borderlands. This started with my cosplay and landed with an Etsy store. Totally agree. Make what you want and others will follow. Absolutely. So, Donnie, let me know in the chat. How does your Etsy uh, store do? Does it do well for you? Uh, are you happy with it? What changes? Uh, what suggestions will you have for people uh, to be successful at doing something like that? I mean, let us know in the chat what you need. Make a sculpture of me at my desk? No, dude. No, don't do that. Mike. Mike is one of my patrons, and I love Mike. We chat a lot on the on the Discord. And uh, no, do not. No, no. Not wearing a thong with a cape. Now you're fetching. No. <laughs> All right, Gabriel's got to go, guys. Thank you, Gabriel, for being part of the chat. Um, everybody here loves your loves your patrons and everything, loves your patron accounts and everything, and um, we hope to see you in, in a video with us soon, man. Everybody say goodbye to Gabriel. Everybody wave. Bye, Wicked. Thank you for all that you do for the hobby. <laughs> all right. Um Jerry, you have a mini me on printables that a designer did for you. That is so cool. <laughs> All right. So we are an hour and 24 minutes into this. And I mean, you guys have brought up a lot of good questions and I, I so appreciate it. And Things like this is uh, what I want to do in the future. A little bit more interaction with all you. 
all you people. And um, I, you know, I look for ideas to make videos for because I want this to be a learning channel. Um, there's really nothing. This is a labor of love for me. I love helping people. I love doing this and I love the hobby and everything. And I love getting people into it to do something for themselves. It's self gratifying. Um, I have spoken to a lot of people, a couple on my Patreon too, that um, have like eye hand coordination issues, maybe from a stroke or heart attack or something like that. And this has really helped them. And dude, that is, that's, that's heavy. I mean, when you talk about things like that, when you get into 3d printing and painting uh, for peace of mind, it's relaxing um, and things like that. And I can teach you and show you different things on how to do it. Um, that, that fills me up right here, man. That fills my heart up. And my wife can tell you, I love helping people. I love, I love doing what I do. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I great appreciate it. Um, so yeah. Um, so, uh, any more Q and a on here? I think we covered pretty much very broad things about making money off of 3d printing, but I think you get the idea that, um, coming up with a product that is tangible to sell, uh, and getting paid for your time is the way to do it. There's many platforms for you to do it, whether it be Etsy, whether it be eBay, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, uh, Twitch, whatever they do over there. Um, you know, just come up with something that you're happy with that you want to do. Um, come up with a good product, great customer service and, uh, be consistent about it and you should grow. Uh, and that's one of the things I think I can also say about Wicked and their patrons is because they are consistently with what they're doing. I don't think they've ever missed a month. They might have missed a deadline a few days late in getting a product out. But when it comes out, it's amazing and the quality is good. And so that is um, that's that's what that's why I do Wicked models in my videos. So if you have a Patreon. Uh, and you want to see one of your works in the videos and everything and um, contact me through email, contact me through messenger or whatever. And uh, I will be glad to take a look at the model. And if we like it, we come to terms, whatever like that, I'll do a video for you here. It's that simple. Uh, also, don't forget I do, and I'm not ending the podcast right yet, but I do have a patron and this helps me buy resin to print stuff. <laughs> whether it's a couple dollars or whatever like that. I also, you know, uh, we have the super thanks and everything like that in the, uh, on the, on the videos as well. And, um, this helps me just keep doing what I'm doing. It helps alleviate the cost, but I do have a patron. We have a private discord where you can go over and show your work. Um, you can ask questions, just chit chat, man. We talk about all kinds of stuff over there. Um, uh, Mike will tell you, uh, uh, and anybody that, that that's on here, that's over on the, on the uh, discord will tell you, uh, we have a good time. We we're, uh, it's, it's a close community. Um, we, we just, we have a good time. I mean, that's what this hobby is about. I mean, if you take it too serious or anything like that, then you're just, you're, you're over exert. I mean, you're over exaggerating everything. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that. A um, couple more things. And then we're going to close this out guys. I have to say this is probably the best live stream I've had sat through. Most of the time I get 10 minutes in, just close it out. Thank you, Sadavian. I appreciate that. Um, um, I sell about five to 20 items a month. It works. Side hustle for sure. Uh, this is Donnie, the question I asked him earlier. I make what I want, and if people like it, great. If not, they can commission. That is what I'm talking about. You were on it, Donnie. That is exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you, Jerry, for the, uh, the for the kind words. And go go check out 3DHP. Uh, Jerry, you got a link you can put up here? Um, go over and check out Jerry. He's on Facebook. He's got his own YouTube channel and everything. Jerry does some uh, amazing work over there. And he's a well full of knowledge. Trust me, the guy is awesome. And very friendly, too. I've, been on, I've actually been on some of his live casts as well. And um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh... So let's see, is your Discord pretty active? Yeah, we're pretty active. Uh, uh, granted, I'm not going to lie to you, we have probably like 45 members in my Patreon, uh, and not everybody's over on the Discord. I mean, they have the invites. Some people choose not to go over there. 
but uh, we you know we we're growing and um, definitely we are looking to get more people over there for the simple fact you know that um, you know we just enjoy each other's company and everything and I think that's what's most important. Um, we we got a bunch of young guys, we got a bunch of old guys, <laughs> and we all have one thing in common, and that's this hobby. We all come together when it comes to printing and painting. And uh, we thoroughly enjoy it and we enjoy each other's company. There's not a bad word said over there towards anyone showing their work. And uh, because that's one thing I encourage. It doesn't matter if you think you suck um, because we all start somewhere. Hell, I've been doing this 35 years and I've got to get better. Um, there's people out there a hundred times better than me. Uh, I just enjoy it. And what I do is I, again, I try to make this a learning channel, a learning YouTube channel my goal is to be the Mr. Beast of 3D printing and painting. Yeah, I'll say it. But, um, you know, if if I help one person uh, get something done where they enjoy it, they're happy, it's helping them out, then that's all I care about. Um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, you got to enjoy what you do. And I enjoy what I do. If not, if you're just doing this for clicks and likes and uh, ad revenue, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Um, but, yeah. Um, so Joseph says, I deal, I use my printing and painting to deal with PTSD, have turned several veterans onto printing and painting. See, that's what I'm talking about, guys. That's awesome. Uh, that's a great thing right there. Uh, thanks for the kind words, Jay Gyro. Love your videos because you keep it real and you share knowledge with all of us. I try to. Yes, sir. Darren says one of the best channels. Thank you, Darren. Much love, my friend. Uh, Antique Mall is a good place also. Yes. I'm a chatty little guy. Well, yeah, it's a damn live stream. What do you expect? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what's the headless statue behind you over my left shoulder? That is a Punisher piece. And um, I'm not sure I'm going to finish that one. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. <sighs> anyway. Uh yeah, Jacob, uh, I think I sent you an invite for the Discord, so if I didn't, um, yeah. And Discord, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, love your channel since finding it. Learn a lot and always fun when I see you pop up on Facebook and see you guys think it's your first rodeo. Been a lot of fun tonight. Keep it up. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it, my friend. Uh, yes, Mike, we are old. Um, my birthday is in two weeks, and I will be 51. Yeah, I told you I was old, man. See the gray? Yeah. See the gray? Yeah. I've been through some shit, my friend. <laughs> Rebecca, I'm 66. Years young. That's cool. Uh, Daniel says, I sell a couple hundred dollars a month. It's enough to pay for my machines. Up to 21 printers. Go, Daniel. Getting a little out of control. Who said that? Pop them. You, you can never have too many printers, right? Um, leave it headless. Now you have a story. <laughs> yes. Found my channel today and dang. Thanks, Ricardo Gonzalez Arenas. Um, I look like I'm 40. Thanks, Donnie. I'll take that as a compliment. I feel like I'm 80. <laughs> but hey, um, I have socks older than you. <laughs> oh my God. You guys are getting crazy now. Uh, I'm attempting to learn how to use Discord. We all are, <laughs> eventually. All right. So, um, guys, this has been fun. This, I mean, this has been really fun. You guys have had me rolling. Um, I appreciate all of your support for the channel. It's been amazing. I've been doing this for almost a year and a half. In July, I think it'll be two years. Um, and I really thoroughly enjoy it. We just... We're almost at 10,800 subscribers for the channel. And um, I'm also on TikTok. I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. So if you're not part of my Facebook group, go over there and sign up. Um, it's free, obviously. But, you know, you can go over there and uh, we treat it like kind of like a Discord. Um, and don't forget my Patreon. If you want to become a Patreon member, sign up for it. You get access to the private Discord. Uh, again, that's where I'm at most of the time. Uh, where we can show you how different things of, you know, printing and painting or whatever like that. 
Uh, and nothing is necessarily um, off limits over there. We talk about everything. We talk about family. We talk about uh, kids and grandkids and, and everything else. But, but that's what the community building is about. I mean, of course, we talk about 3D printing and painting. Don't get me wrong. But there's times we'll kind of need a break from that, too, as well. And we want to kind of get to know each other uh, to be a little bit closer for, um, you know, for 3D printing and painting. You know, I mean, we, we need to have this. In we have this one hobby in common, but it's nice to really get to know each other. So that's awesome. Um, Brandon, you're here. Have you been here for a long time? Uh, thanks, Alex. I appreciate. Yes, his wife loves corgis. My wife loves corgis. We are puppy people. <laughs> I showed my wife that video, man. See, that's what I'm talking about. We're just a close niche community. Um, uh, we, we uh, I showed my wife that video and she loved it. Honey, are you still on? Did I get my hemorrhoids fixed yet? What? <sighs> Your wife loves puppies. Yes, sir. Um, awesome. Yes, Daryl, we will be doing more of these. Um, that's another thing, too. I will be doing, uh, uh, we'll be doing like things where we have like guests come on board. Uh, so Anthony from Greedy 3D, if you guys have not seen his channel, go check him out. He kind of does the same thing that I do, like tutorials, paints, and print ups and everything. Um, so yeah, go check him out. And uh but I'm going to have like people like that on the channel, on the, the live streams as well. That way they can tell you a little bit about patrons and, and what they do and everything else. So yeah. Hold on one second. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> there can be only one. Yes. All right. Okay, guys, so what I am going to be doing is um, we're going to be doing these uh, every so often, probably every few days, at least once a week, where we'll touch on different subjects and everything. And um, if you have any uh, suggestions for subjects or things that you want to see in the live streams or whatever, by all means, you can email me. If you're one of my patrons, let me know in the Discord. Uh, you can put comments in this right here, even after the uh, the replay is up. Um, uh, you can contact me on Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. Uh, you can do any of that. So, um, but yeah, um, I appreciate everybody's support. Um, Base blends, uh, yes. So, yeah, we'll plug your channel here, dude. Um, I think it is, hold on. So Thomas, it's Thomas, right? So Thomas has a patron, I think. Super Shark Shop, right? Did I get that right? Go over and check him out. He's also on Facebook. He is in my group, and I think he's I think he's in my Facebook group, so go over and check him out. So that's another thing, too. I... I actively want to support the the smaller channels the uh the smaller artists and everything like that with their work um you know help you guys get the word out there and everything like that i think that we um i think that the this community needs more people involved in it and um you know absolutely so all right guys i'm talking out of my head now it's getting late uh, been on here for about an hour and 40 minutes. I could probably do this for another three hours, but unfortunately I have to work in the morning. <laughs> I'm sure some of you guys do too. So does anybody have any last minute questions? Let them roll. Anybody at all have any questions? Remember my Patreon. Remember the channel. If you have not signed up for the channel, go over and do so now. Hit notification bell. You don't miss out on any future videos. And thank you, Mike, for being part of it, my friend. Yes, I will be doing more live videos, sir, and we will have um, all kinds of stuff on here. Hopefully, we'll have more people on, like Gabriel, to uh, to uh, talk about uh, you know things like this and everything. So, all right. 
<sighs> yep, and thank you for the support on the channel. Daryl, you are a man of my liking. Let's get the Creative Collector to 50,000 subscribers by the summer. <laughs> that is, that would be awesome. What's the coolest figure you have done so far? That's easy. Black Forge Games Tension. I freaking love that thing. And they have the uh, Corrupted Tension um, that's out now, and I've got the file. Matter of fact, I was just talking with Enzo today from Black Forge, and we're going to be doing some special promotions for you guys, uh, for my Patreon members, for my subscribers, for my audience and everything. Uh, they're going to be coming on and doing a live stream with me pretty soon. So go check out Black Forge Games. they got a really bunch of really cool fantasy stuff over there. If you haven't seen my Tengen video, go check it out. It's all All right. Still good there, man. There you go. Awesome. Hey. All right, guys. If that's all everybody has, uh, <coughs> that's all the questions for everybody. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this down and get ready for uh, get ready for uh, work in the morning. Oh, dude, you come on a little late. <laughs> Fag 3D, everybody. He is one of my patrons, one of my active members in my Discord. An amazing dude, very friendly guy. Give him some love here. All right, guys. Um, so we're going to wrap this up here for the night. Um, I guess I need to do my outro. So here we go. Ready? And stay safe out there. Get out and create something. Print, print, paint, repeat. And until the next live stream, everybody. We'll see ya. Peace out, guys. Thank you so much.